Okay, so guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get out of my uh, pre PowerPoint presentation. I'll show you on a browser uh, what the Facebook pages I wanna show you. Most of the stuff we've talked about, I've already opened and kept so that I can quickly show you and then get back to talking about ads itself, okay? So this is how all of our Facebook pages look, yes? Now remember I was talking about groups. So these are the, all the groups, these are first two groups that I manage and these are all the groups I'm part of. So, so this has been going on for a very long time and whenever I get time, um, I go back, look for more groups that I should be part of. That's the strategy, right? You need to con continuously do this, otherwise your reach starts to reduce. And you constantly need to add uh, groups and databases to your reach. And this is a way for me to do it, is I just become part of new groups. The other, just my strategy to groups also is, if I see that my friend that's in the similar space is part of a group and I'm not, I'll join that group. I won't even go search. I know that, listen, he's part of whatever, let me also join. Uh, page four, Lush. Um, and we started talking about it. You see up here it says health and beauty. That's the category that we talked about, that you have to choose the correct category, okay? Look at their image. Uh, this is their profile image, okay? Perfect size, talks about Lush. So wherever they're gonna post anything, and we can see this, right here is a post, this is the image that comes up. So if they don't have this correct, then everywhere it's gonna show incorrectly. We talked about images being very important. As I told you before, when we looked at their website as well, if you look at these four products, more than likely, they look more than just cosmetics, okay? This is a very compelling image that they put out there, okay? And these are, what, five new soaps that they've launched? Regarding the category uh, which Facebook has, yeah. uh, just in case if the kind of category I'm looking out for is not mentioned, can can I create one out there? Is no. it, they don't give option? They just use other. They don't let you create anything. Okay. <laughs> and they haven't changed the categories, I think, for a while. Uh, they've left it as it is. If you don't belong in one of them, you just use other. Because I've seen a couple of restaurants having their own uh, different kind of categories no, being created. No, they cannot have their own categories. There's no way. They may be showing it differently, but they are part of a certain category that Facebook already has. Okay. You cannot create new. Remember we were talking about the About page? This is the Times of India page I was showing you. Yeah, so all of them have created their own pages. By the way, do you see how many likes they have? Lush, they have a million people that have liked their page, okay? That's the kind of brand that they're running right now. Um, and if you look at Times of India, they have 8.7 million people that have liked their page. And what I was gonna show you is their about page, right? So we said that uh, they have everything filled in their page info. Everything from start date, when they were founded, short description, company overview, long description, their mission, their products, what type of products they carry, their phone number, and their website. So these are company pages. Almost everyone has a company page out there. Today, almost any organization, uh, may it be a commercial organization or uh, other way also, they will all have at least a Facebook page today. Now, if you already have a Facebook account, creating the page is very easy. Um, how many of you don't have a Facebook account? That's good. Uh, at, le at least it'll make life easier that uh, all of you have it. It's a simple thing. Uh, you can come up here. You see the arrow up there on top? If you come there and go to create page, it's, you can start to create your own company page, right? And it's gonna bring you to a page like this, okay? Here uh, is where you can actually choose you know, which type of a page you wanna create. Now, you can also cheat. Uh, what you can do is you can look at other competitors and see what kind of page they've created. You can look at other successful brands and see like, like we were looking at, you know, this is the kind of page that Lush has created. Do we want a similar page? Do we want a page that's different to them? And based on that, we can choose. And again, you know, you can say, listen, I'm a local business or a place and I need a page based on that. Or I'm a company or organization or institute. I'm a brand or a product. I'm an artist of some sorts. Uh, I deal in entertainment, or I deal in cause and community, okay? Which is basically your nonprofit, okay? And each one of them, when you click on this, it's gonna give you different sets of options, okay? To create a page. So let's say we're a brand or product, right? Remember, you're gonna have to choose a category. Here's a list of categories that they're giving you when it comes to brand or a product. So let's say that we're in electronics. So we can choose electronics. now. What it's asking for is what is the brand or the product name that you want this page created for? So let's say that we work with ABC Electronics. So I'll just put ABC Electronics and say get started. Now what it does, it starts to ask you for all the information we were talking about. 
we saw in uh, Lush's page about us and everything. So here it's saying, okay, you know what? Give us a description. Tell what the page is about. So the, here you're gonna put some description, right? Whatever the description is. Here you put your website address because remember in all these pages, if you look at it, it shows you website address here and it's showing you a telephone number here. So whatever you're inputting there will start to show up on this page. So let's say we say, okay, you know what? Our website is uh, this. Now here is where they'll give you that username. I want ABC Electronics. Now I say, okay, save. Now it says ABC Electronics is taken because it will only assign one name to one person or one company. So we'll have to now choose another name. So maybe we can say ABC Electronics India. I choose to put an underscore just so that I can differentiate the two. So I save it. Now it says Facebook web address must include alphanumeric. You can't use underline, uh, the underscore. So take that out. So it says that name is available very simply. Okay, upload your profile picture, okay? Whatever you wanna upload. Remember this has to be a certain size. I think if I remember correctly, it's a 160 by 160 pixel image that has to be uploaded here, okay? Um, I'll say skip it because I don't wanna go through the effort right now, but if I want, I can just upload it right now. Now, does it says, do you want to add this page to your favorites? You know, on your Facebook page, you have your favorites here. So it's asking, do you wanna add that page there? So if you see, I have Etailing India, I want an advantage, all these pages as my favorites here. So you can choose to add it, or you can say skip it. Now here, it's asking for a preferred page audience. Remember we talked about, we need to know what audience we're going after. Otherwise, how do we target them? So even this page, when Facebook decides to recommend this page to others, it will do it based on this. So you can say that, listen, I want everybody in uh, Mumbai. So I say Mumbai, and it's gonna give me that, okay? And it'll ask me, do I, what radius do I want? So is this just Mumbai, or do I want it around Mumbai as well? Okay. Um, I can say, well, I also want Navi Mumbai, okay? And I can keep on adding like this, whatever locations I want. What age groups do I want to target? I say, you know what? I'm only going after 18 to about 30. That's the kind of product I have, and that's what I'm gonna go after. And my product only caters to women, okay? Let's say I'm selling cosmetics, and it only caters to women. What is the interest that people need to have for my page? Let's say I say beauty. I want people interested in beauty, okay? I'm selling cosmetics. I mean, I know I made it electronics, but <laughs> let's say I change my mind in the middle, I'm gonna start selling cosmetics. Or, you know, better yet, maybe an electronic product I'm selling that's more cosmetic oriented. So I say, okay, I want people that are interested in beauty. And maybe my product is a hairstyle product, right? So I'll say, okay, I also want hairstyle. Again, there are hundreds and thousands of interests that you can keep on looking at. And you can keep on choosing what you want. Okay? And I'm serious, if you spent a day looking at the interest, you still would not be done. There's so many different types of interests that they have, okay? The other thing is, you know, it, it gives you suggestions based on what you already chose also. Or you can just browse all of them. So I'll say, you know what? I wanna go to people that are dating. My product is geared towards women that are 18 to 30, into beauty, and are dating. Imagine the power Facebook has when it knows that somebody is dating. Not that, I told you. I can also look at people that were recently married, recently engaged, had a baby, had are traveling or uh, uh, temporarily located someplace, they, it gives me ability to look at anything. So let's, let's just quickly just see what other things we can, anybody can think of any one particular interest that you want to maybe go after? Food, what kind of food interest? Food is a big category, right? Okay, nice, weight loss. Okay, so I put weight loss. Fitness and wellness, right? I don't think there can be many people on Facebook searching for weight gain. But anyway, they may be. Maybe they want to take a protein shake or whatever. It could be mass building or whatever they want to do. But let's assume weight loss. But look at this. And each one of these, on the right-hand side, it's showing you how many people on Facebook actually correspond to that interest. 258 million people have some interest in hairstyle. 102 million people have it in weight loss. 154 million in dating. And 169 million in beauty, okay? So you can start to figure out what your audience size will be if you were global, let's say. These numbers are global. Now what language do you want those people to speak? Maybe only English. You can specify UK English. You can specify US English. Um, you can, I think you can even say Hindi, right? So depending on who my audience is, I can actually specify that here. So I'll say all English and just save it. 
Now here, that's simply my first company page is created on Facebook. And I can now edit anything that I have not yet put in there. So if I forgot to put a photo, I can put it here. If I want to add a cover photo, I can put it here. Everything is listed here. And this is your username. The at sign, that's your username. So if in your post, besides your hashtag, if you put the at sign, you can actually come directly to the page also. Uh, when we're talking about a profile picture, would logo be an ideal one to put in the profile picture or do we recommend something else? No, see, uh, logo is great, but what do people associate you with, okay? So let's go back to our examples, right? One of them has put their logo, very simply. But TOI as a brand is recognized by TOI, right? The name itself. Plus, they, everybody knows what they do. When you look at Lush, they put Lush Fresh Handmade Cosmetics as part of that. Because even if people don't know who they are, they will know by the profile what they do. So two different strategies that they've adopted. So uh, could we say that uh, for not known brands, can we put what this page is about? You can like, put... Like uh, how they've mentioned it's handmade cosmetics. Sure, why not? That would be a better yes. way to do it. Something that tells them what it is. Because remember, if you go down, look at all these posts, this is how it's gonna show up. If you don't know what Lush does and simply that picture appears, you at least have an idea they're into cosmetics. In case of TOI, that doesn't happen that way, right? TOI anyway is known as news, media, etc. Right? So most people will anyway know. One question, sir. Um, <clears throat> hi, this is Ashish, and the question is regards to the uh, the audience. Uh, I think this is a new thing they've added now to start to add the audience in the start itself when you're creating a page. Uh, let's say if a person has not done that, or probably they have done it, but then uh, after a month or so, they can they are thinking about more audience to be added to it. So in future, can we change the audience we have selected or? Yeah, so if you go any of any time, you can go to your page settings and you can change almost everything about the page. Okay. There's nothing, the only thing you're not able to change often is your vanity URLs, right? The special URLs they give you? Uh, it, it only gives you two times, like the first time you change it, it only gives you a second option to change it in future. That's, that's exactly, about it. that's what I'm saying. So that, that's the only restriction. Otherwise, you can change almost everything that you want. So in this case, we've got a page ready. Now somebody asked the question, this is one of the newest functionality that's been added by Facebook, which is add shop section. So what's happening is, as more and more transactional businesses come on Facebook, they wanna have shopping divisions or shopping part of the, of the page as well. So now it's letting you add a shop section to it as well, okay? So if I say add it, okay, it says, how do you want your shop? Do you want it in Indian rupee or whatever? Let's say in our case, we want it in Indian rupee. Here, on top, you can describe what products you sell, and on the bottom, you can start to add products, okay? So you can actually have your shop here. So here, they'll let you add photos, they'll add your name to it, a price, a description. So what starts to happen is, if you are a product or services company, you probably would wanna list your products and services here, besides just having a page that talks about what you do and all of that. <laughs> This is a newest, one of the newer sections that they've added. And now if you look at here, they have a yeah. shop. Will the customer be able to buy directly from here? Like through payment gateway or they will link, uh, they will send a link to the website. Like they will, the payment and all will be done through website. Okay, so Facebook um, is starting to transact, but in India, they're still not transacting. So abroad, they're actually transacting. You can buy it on Facebook. Uh, here, they're not transacting. So here, they would actually so send then you there back. will be no need of like, maybe there might be no need of your website. Like, you know, yeah. e-commerce. That's so yeah. they are doing that way. Yes. So yes. everybody will shop on Facebook. Yeah. So you, if you, and we'll talk about it again in Pinterest, but pins now, they have buyable pins, which is just, you can actually buy it. You can buy a product. So all of them have added capabilities today to go ahead and shop. What used to happen earlier is we would actually have to take an app and install the app on the page so that we can see our products. Today, Facebook actually allows you to do them yourself. You can actually add your product right into your now Facebook. Now we cannot page. shop here, no? no? Now in India. No, you can't shop shop. And you okay. can't pay for it on Facebook. Yeah, you can just see products. Yeah, you can see the products there, okay. yes. With Facebook, uh, which allows you to like, do shopping itself, like they have payment gateway and all. That's what I'm saying. Like so, a chairs or something. Correctly. So there are apps still that you can install. And yes, they will let you transact. But Facebook itself today in India does not let you transact. Okay, so there's a difference. The app, basically what it's doing is they're actually transacting outside of Facebook. 
You just don't see that. Facebook itself cannot do it. In, in the US and other places, Facebook is letting you transact there. So you actually can pay it right there. Okay, don't go outside of Facebook at all. Sir, uh, right now the business page has been created in your personal uh, Facebook account. Correct. So can it be directly created outside the personal account? Yeah, so if you have a business, so again, you can sign up in Facebook using one of the business email IDs, right? And then create it in there. The other is it gives me an ability to give the management to anybody. So basically what I can do um, is I can give you the ability to manage this page as well. So all, let's say you have three employees in your company that can manage it. They can still access this page like it's their own. So yes, it's created under my account, but the access can be to anybody in the company. The other option is like I said, sign up with an account from your company and then create this. One or the other. So okay. which is better? Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, in most companies, they would probably be on a, on a general company account, right? Because in my company as a founder, I don't leave. But in other companies, if it's, if it's a bigger corporation, they're not gonna do it based on a person. They will do it for the company. So uh, do we have any kind of restrictions on the number of products we can uh, put on as a free listing or then it goes no. into charging? So, uh, from, from what I understand, I know that a couple of people had tried a few hundred products, didn't have any restriction from shopping, uh, from putting it on. I don't think they do uh, have a restriction. They actually want people to stay here and shop, right? It gives them more time on Facebook, right? So they want people to just shop here. Actually, um, if I remember correctly, Pinterest with their buyable pins don't charge you any commission. You can actually buy it there, but they don't charge you any commission because they actually want people to come. If I remember correctly, I think it is Pinterest, but they want people to stay. So you mean uh, the shop option for Facebook India is just like a product catalog? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. But you can use those apps. Again, outside apps actually have a full-fledged running e-commerce site on Facebook. As in, uh, if someone uh, clicks the product, that uh, link to the website yeah but it can without going to the website without leaving the overall page it can actually transact there as well because it's an it's sitting on top of facebook there's several of them there so like i said this is uh, our company page very quickly going back to these guys um just uh, reiterating if you see they've uh, used hashtags on everything okay uh, if you look at it this one is very interesting it says packaging is rubbish go naked uh, hashtag is go naked. So again, going back, uh, just quickly, if you use, if you look at every one of their posts, it has a hashtag, okay? It has nice images, it'll have a hashtag. Here they're asking you to download their thing. I'm just going down, just looking at something interesting if I can find from them. It says unpackaged, unconventional, unboring. We've got five new ways to lather, okay? So they're talking about soaps, obviously. First one says, respect your elders. Uh, second one says, serendipity. The third one says, outback mate. Fourth one says, maple. And the fifth one says, layer cake. Names they've come up with, interesting. People, I'm sure, want to know more uh, when, when they do this. If we look at Times of India, they are probably not following most of the things that Lush follows. If you look at it, uh, hashtags are not there. Okay, When Times of India does it, there's no hashtag. Mostly. Very few hashtags are there. Okay. Just everything they're doing. There's almost no hashtags in their thing. But they're a new site. Uh, they will trend anyway, even without those hashtags. But new age media sites will definitely use hashtags. Times of India may not, but new age media sites will 100% start using hashtags. Because you guys have heard of your story. Yeah. So let's look at your story. And I'm pretty sure that your story uses hashtag in most of their stuff. Nope, they don't either. So I guess media guys don't want to use it. So maybe because they might not want to uh, like share the similar content. Like, you know, if they use hashtag for certain kind of uh, yeah, uh, article, so if someone clicks on that article, then other similar articles can be shown. So they might not want to. Possibly, that may be one of their strategies that I don't want to see other people's things. Okay, any questions on this? Some of the tips we talked about, we see samples here, examples here. Yes? Coming to the larger image that we are now seeing in this case, you know, the Tech Spark 2016, is that something that will become dynamic over a period of time or will it be a constant? It's, right now it's constant. 
it looks like here it is they are talking about September 30, October 1. Yeah, so uh, they are talking they about an change event. It. So ideally what? It needs to be uh, something that is fixed to the brand that yeah. people will relate to the brand. Yeah. Yeah. So if you look at Starbucks, this is what they have. If you look at Dove, this is what they have. And it keeps on changing. Okay, by the way, um, somebody asked this also. You see the check mark that says verified page? So what has happened is Facebook has verified the authenticity of this brand. And you can actually get it done as well. So you get a check mark that it truly, this page belongs to this brand. Okay, so if there's a brand you own, you can actually create the page, go through the verification process, and you get the check mark. The verification as a paid service? Facebook, so Facebook, so when you create, the Facebook will actually send something to you and then get it back, and there's a whole process, and if it's verified, they'll give you this. Uh, how to create competitions or how to provide exclusive deals? Any example? We're gonna, we're gonna come to that, but uh, what, do you, what do you mean by deals so that I know? Yeah, because in uh, evaluate and analysis results, the uh, sixth strategy, huh. uh, there's a point you have shown in your uh, slide. Okay, reward your social media followers by running competitions or providing uh, and providing exclusive deals. Yeah, how to do that in our own page? Okay, let me see. I'm sure Flipkart has some. Okay, they only have deals. All right, so they have 50% off pre book. 50% off, they post very often. 35%, these are all deals, they keep on running. Here, here is that uh, contest that says, uh, you get the LE2, LE2 at just 11.99, 100 lucky winners get gift watches, but they're registered now. Right? This is a contest that they're running. Sale begins on 28 June, but again, you can register and get uh, that, win that, okay? I'm sure they keep on running all of these all the time. Yeah, Amazon also has it, but Comparatively, Amazon will do lesser. Uh, Amazon obviously has different sites for different pages for different countries. So there's an exclusive, obviously, the Moto G that they launched. There's another contest that they're running, right? Find the eight talented artists in this puzzle. World Music Day, okay? A way to engage their audience. So okay, listen, find this, you know? And they're showing you some of them there. World Productivity Day, they're running something for if you look at just Flipkart and Amazon, you'll find a whole bunch of contests. Here, this is the OnePlus. We saw the winners for this, right? So what they're saying is winning a OnePlus 3 has been never this easy. 12 phones to be won. There's a quiz that you do use the app for, okay? And if you participate in it, you get a OnePlus phone. 12 people get it, okay? And that's where they announce the winners on top. So, like I said, um, those are all organic things we talked about till now. Okay, organic posts, organic. Now, what about the ads? These are your paid uh, Facebook ads, right? So here, you have different types of ads there, okay, with different objectives, obviously. There's something called boost your post. So let's say you post something, and you want more people to see it. It's called simply boost your post, okay? Promote your page, so the page that we created. Do we want more and more people to get engaged to that page, see that page, like that page? We can do promote your page. Send people to your website. So you can create ads that when somebody clicks, they go to your website. You can increase conversions on your website. So this links back to tracking and helps you convert better. Get installs of your app. Let's say you have a mobile app. You want more people to install it. So there's a different type of an ad to do that. Okay? Increase engagement in your app. If you want more people to use your app, let's say you Candy Crush, right? You want more people to play Candy Crush, and you're one of the guys that promotes Candy Crush, then you can do that using increased engagement in your app, okay? Uh, reach people near your business. Let's say you're a brick and mortar. You've got a shop in Mallard. You want people around Mallard to be able to be reached through Facebook, okay? So you can create local reach people on, you know, near your business, okay? Raise attendance at your event. Let's say we do a conference, we do a seminar, we want more people to come, okay? That's a different type of an ad, because this type of an ad tells them, are you interested, are you going, et cetera, et cetera, on the ad itself, okay? Uh, get people to claim your offer. You see a lot of these ads today. Say, claim your offer, right? And you click it, and whatever the offer is, you can claim it. And lastly, but not least, get video views. So you upload videos, let's say on your Facebook page, you want more people to see it. 
So you can do the last one, which is get video views. So these are all the different types of ads we can create in Facebook. Now, what is the type of ad that's used the most? 74.8% of ads are send people to your website, which is called you know, basically a link. So you put the ad, when they click, they go to the website. That's 74.8%. This is from Facebook. Okay? So most people are creating those types of ads. All the other types are within the rest of it. So if you look at it, 8.2% create photo-based ads. 15.1% uh, create video ads. And then everything else is the remaining amount, which is almost nothing. So the reason why you would be interested in this, one, because video and photo give you more ability to do more things. Uh, and probably set you apart, okay? Uh, versus the people that are just creating link ads. Some best practices to use well before we actually see how to create the ads, etc. Okay, make sure you use audience targeting. I showed you that page, and we'll look at it again when we create the ad. Make sure you know that you can target to any level in Facebook, right? Uh, interest we talked about, demographics we talked about. Um, all kinds of stuff. So make sure you use audience targeting. Secondly, put your important content first in the ad. Uh, don't make it your second sentence. That should be your first sentence or the first phrase. Okay? Something that most people probably don't do out of just not having enough time or resources is to rotate ads, which is after so often, change the ads. Okay? Maybe after a week, maybe after whatever. Because you know what happens? Um, in all of social media platforms, is when your ad goes out, sometimes the ad is going to the same person multiple times. You probably want to change that ad because it rotates. So after maybe, let's say, 10 days again, the same person might see the ad. So let's say you're running the ads for 30 days. So you want to make sure that you start rotating ads so that person sees something new coming from you. Use tracking. So Facebook gives you an ability to get a conversion pixel, and I'll show you where to get it from. Okay? Put this on your website, your blog, whatever. Okay? And make sure you're able to track what is happening. Use strong call to actions, something we talked about in content and everywhere else. Make sure there are strong enough call to actions. Okay? Make sure that they're told to buy now, shop now, claim now. Something that tells them, abhi karo. The last point, which is something that I also, uh, initial days, was not very uh, probably on top of, uh, because I thought it's OK, are uh, different ads for different feeds. What happens is ads in Facebook get delivered to desktops, and they get delivered to mobile devices, let's say an iPad, phone, et cetera. Even on desktop, you have two ways. You get it in your news feed, or you get it on the right-hand side. What we're saying is the ad for each one of these things should be different. Why? One, because if it's mobile versus desktop, there are two different types of people that are looking at the ad. So their messaging and everything has to be different. Okay. If it's on the right side versus newsfeed, it anyway has to be different because newsfeed gives you more ability to put a bigger image, bigger text. Right hand side is very small. Okay? So we need to make sure that we have different types of ad for these different feeds. Most people find it very easy. Ad create karo, say, okay, I want it to go to all three feeds and let it go. But what they're not understanding is even the audience may be different between these three feeds. Okay? So we should create ads that are differently for the three feeds. Okay, This one, let's do quickly. This way you can actually kind of find most places. There's some best practices around images. When it's an ad, when it's an image ad, let's say you're putting an image, uh, they say that the text should not be any more than 90 characters. Okay, uh, Link title, which is the link of the website, should not be more than 25 characters. They, they're basing all of this based on what is best to view. Okay? Uh, image ratio is that image size can be between 1,200 pixel by 627. Okay? Uh, minimum image width has to be 600 pixels. Again, they have all these requirements written down. We've kind of just put it out there for you to see. 
that there are best practices in, in the text you write, the image you put. Now, have you ever seen a, a multiple image ad, a carousel ad on Facebook? Everybody seen a carousel ad? Somebody not seen a carousel ad? So it's just multiple images on one ad. Okay, You can actually move from one image to the other image. Actually, those ads work a little differently than when it's a single image. So we have to be careful which ad we're putting in because the image size for that ad is different than it is for a single image ad. Okay, Single image ad is stretched. When it's multiple images, they're all square. You'll notice that when you look at ads, okay? The other thing you have to remember in Facebook is only 20% of the total image can be text. 80% has to be an image. If you cannot put more than 20% text, otherwise Facebook will reject the ad. And by the way, the way, the way they measure it, you can look in the help section, they create grids and they count how many grids are part of text. So the, the bad thing is because it's a grid system, if your text expands into, even if it's only 20% total, but expands into a lot of grids, then it's considered as more than 20% text. So you have to keep on playing to see how, how do you fit it into the least amount of grids. Yeah. Here what we are saying is uh, text being they have the ability to identify uh, a text within an image. Yes. Huh? That is what you're saying. Yes. They do. Um, and one is their automation, and the other is they have teams. So they have teams that actually review ads. Um, and even if the ad has been approved once, they can disapprove it later if somebody finds that it's more than 20% text. Okay. Um, and you can challenge that at times. You can actually tell them that, listen, my ad doesn't have 20%, it's because the grid system is considering it 20%. Most of the time, they don't consider that as a thing that they'll, uh, they'll let you go, but sometimes they'll come back and say, okay, you know what, you're right. So is there any standard font size that we use? It's all up to you. What, how much messaging are you writing? Happy Father's Day uh, is one message that I have to write. Now, whatever it takes to fit, I'll do. Quickly, uh, this is a typical Facebook ad, okay? Uh, if you look at it on the middle, where it says one headline, okay, that's the main title of the ad, okay, and it's about 250 characters, approximately. They allow you to do that, okay. Number two, that it says text, it's a short description that you write about in the ad. Number three is a longer description, okay. Number four is the caption or the URL of your domain. Uh, number five is the call to action. Okay, and these call to actions change. Based on what type of ad you're creating, the call to action will change. They give you options. Okay? And lastly, uh, the middle, number six, is the image. So this is how a typical ad looks in Facebook. Okay, a few more points, and then we'll get into uh, creating the ad. So the data shows, and again, these are things, by the way, by, from Facebook. The data shows that the most popular Facebook ad headline is four words. They've done research and said the most popular way people put an ad is about four words, even though the median length is five words. Short headlines keep well within the character limit, so we talked about the character limit, uh, using up to 10% of possible space on average. They only want the headline to use 10% of total space of the ad. That's their standard to you, okay? Like it says, the limited space and a short headline forces you to get the point of the ad. They don't want you to keep on writing. So they say, get to the point, put a short one in there. Short headlines grab attention and make customers click to find more information. So this is a good insight. Because it's a short headline, if it makes an impact, people have to click it to find more information. Otherwise, if you tell them everything on the ad, they will never click it. Now, remember we talked about the head, head, uh, header, and now here it's talking about the post text. So it's saying the text, median length is approximately 15 words, not more than that. Okay, these are, again, guidelines. They've actually put graphs to show you how this works, okay? 
So they're saying it has to be about 15. Okay. Now they're saying that about people use about 17 usually. Even though 15 is best, people will use 17. Okay. Uh, which is 35% of the character limit. Even though you have a limit that's big, just use 35%. Don't use all of it just because you have it. Again, it keeps your text tight and to the point, and make sure that it makes them click through to your site. OK. Now, here are some popular words that Facebook has said that most ads contain, and which are effective ads. Okay. If you look at it, it says you or your. Okay. Our brain is activated by hearing or thinking of our own name and ourselves. Okay. So there was an uh, uh, example uh, where they had the same ad with you and without you. Now, because the way we think, as soon as I say you, our brain, like it says, our brain starts to hear. So the yeah, ad becomes more effective. Okay. Uh, Free, obviously, every time anybody ever reads free, you know, their ears perk up and say, ah, so they kya bol rahe. right? The same thing when it goes there, they read free and they say, okay, aage padh lete hain, kya, kya free mil rahe. Uh, now, because now says, do it now, it's a scarcity. Remember I said call to actions, everything says buy now, click now, et cetera now, okay? New, another word. Okay, because new, we hear new and we want to see what it is because we haven't never seen it before. So using these words, audiences are naturally drawn. Okay, so when you're creating your ads, look at these things. Popular numbers. So Facebook says that if you use a number, okay, it actually works in your favor at times. So in this case, it says they used a very highly specific number, 226,286. One, it's a high number. Second, it's an accurate number, right? It's very specific. So it makes people think that this is real, okay? And the high number gives them social proof that you're actually a true person or a true company or something, right? So the way this General Assembly, by the way, is an online education program in the US that offers very technical courses, right? So they've put, find out why 226,286, okay, chose General Assembly to learn how to code. They gave a number. Now all of us think, wow, 226,286 people. It's a large number and very specific number. They must be true. They must be real. Something that also works for any of your businesses. You can actually have an ad that says, served 10,156 customers till date. You know what? It is a very effective ad because people want, know, know, uh, people want to see that. You see newspaper? Whenever you see a newspaper ad somewhere, a new newspaper is launching, it always talks about 350,000 plus subscribers. Right? That's the reason. Okay. It makes us connect with the numbers, okay? So if you can put numbers, the other cool thing about numbers is not everyone uses numbers, okay? So it stands out. Your ad can actually stand out by putting the number in there. Okay, uh, some of the most popular call to actions that Facebook says uh, most people use are uh, learn more, shop more, sign up, okay? Uh, these three are used more than anything else across Facebook, okay? Again, we talked about it, call to action makes people act now. So if you have the ability, make sure we use call to action on the ads. And again, call to action shows your audience exactly where they need to click. Remember, people need to be told where to click, right? And these are the least popular call to actions, okay? Contact us, buy tickets, subscribes. Okay, these are the least used. Okay, donate, must read, get quote, all of these. Okay, for most basic services, you can utilize the less lesser used call to action. So again, if it's something that's very different, 
you can use the, these call to actions, but otherwise, you probably use the most popular ones. Okay. Um, any call to action that is specific to your product or service is worth using. So even though this says these are least used, let's say buy tickets, but you're in travel, and you're offering a special offer on air travel, then obviously you want to put buy tickets. What else will you put? Right? So in that case, you can still use it.